We are back here at the Gigabyte booth and we are now in the workstation corner where I found this very interesting piece of hardware. So you can see it's a server. It's something which is done in cooperation with Acetech. So it's a liquid cooled server solution. We have eight Tesla V100 v on here, which are really, really expensive and very, very strong, very powerful for rendering applications or like scientific calculations. What is really interesting about this is the way this liquid cooling system works. So just in general, if we're taking a look at the hardware, we have this big motherboard on top where all the Tesla V100s are sitting. So we have eight of them in total. Then we have a lot of PLX chips in the back. So there are small heat sinks, four, four of them in the back. And those are PLX chips to distribute the PCIe lanes. Then we have small cables that look kind of SATA cables, like very massive SATA cables, but those are PCI Express cables routing the PCI Express lanes down to the mainboard which is sitting underneath. So we have two CPUs underneath there where the V100s are connected to. Going over to the liquid cooling solution, what I find really interesting is the fact that we have eight cooling blocks from Acetech and all of them include an individual pump. So typically when you're talking about liquid cooling solutions, you always have this idea in mind where you have one big circle, one big circle and just typically one pump that's providing the flow inside the system. But in this cooling solution, we have eight pumps in total. So you can see we have four connections on here. So always uh, the red marking the hot side, like the output of the hot water coming outside and the blue for the intake. And then we always have two blocks that are connected to each other. So two V100s are connected over this. Both have an individual pump. So the water goes through and then it goes down here where we have two big pipes, which are then going in a second rack that is sitting underneath. And there is a very big, massive radiator inside. It's the same like in a water cooling solution, like you know, from your typical open water cooling loop, but it's very massive, this radiator. And it's capable of providing 6,000 watt of cooling and that's that's quite a lot um, you can also have this cold distribution plate like a heat, heat exchanger plate where you can see those um, blue and red connections are going uh, to and you can see that there are those two massive pipes connected to it which then provide the cooling through uh, the radiator so I just thought this is a kind of interesting cooling solution just the fact that we have eight pumps in here typically I always know it's only one pump but it's also one very positive aspect about this cooling solution is that if two V100s are connected with two blocks and each block carries a pump, if one pump fails, it still works. So it's kind of a redundant solution because if one pump works, the other pump from the second block can still provide cooling. So that's a very, very cool way of kind of bypassing the problem of water cooling solutions that if your pump fails, you're kind of screwed, but in this solution, you're not. Before we start going over to a second building where we're taking a closer look at all the X570 boards, I actually found this system. This system is up and running and it's already showing AMD Ryzen Matisse. So it's already the AMD Ryzen 3000. It's a six core uh, 12 thread CPU. Not really sure which exact model it is. The specification says AMD and then 100, then a ton of zeros and then 31 minus 02. In the past, it was always that the engineering samples would display like 31 minus 38, for example, and then it would be the base clock and a boost clock, which can't be the case in here because we, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it right now, but there is a 22 multiplier uh, as kind of base and it always boosts up to 4.2. So we can already see that on this CPU, uh, engineering sample, probably an early one, it already boosts to 4.2G, which is kind of impressive. And I'm really looking forward to see the final AMD 3000 CPUs. On this system, they're going to display uh, PCI Express 4.0 speed with the PCI Express SSDs, which in my personal opinion is one of the most amazing and most important features of X570 because we now have finally PCI Express 4.0. Typically, it's not really required when you're running GPUs or anything like that. The bandwidth is fine. PCI Express 3.0 is totally fine for 2080 Ti and all of that. But if you're taking a look at PCI Express NVMe drives, this becomes very, very important. Currently, we are limited by the fastest SSDs by PCIe 3.0 speed. 
if we're looking at PCI, uh, PCI Express 4.0, we have two gigabyte per second per lane, which means if we're running a typical NVMe drive with four lanes, we have up to eight gigabyte per second speed in theory. So the question is, how high can Samsung and all of those brands push the PCI Express speed on the drives? It will be very interesting to see that. Unfortunately, we cannot perform any benchmarks right now because Gigabyte removed the mouse. So we cannot touch anything, but we can already see that this is running on the X570 Auros Master. And we will take a closer look at those boards right now. So we'll go over to a different building, take a look at all the Gigabyte X570 boards.